Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to this video tutorial on ASP.NET 4.5 for students at King Faisal University and for others who want to learn ASP.NET. This is part 12 in the series entitled Classes and Objects in ASP.NET 4.5 using C Sharp. OOP or Object Oriented Programming is an important style of programming where the software is treated as a collection of objects. Objects that are much more similar to the parts of a car assembled together to form a vehicle. A class defines the properties, methods, and events for objects. Object is an instance of a class. The components in the toolbar are all examples of classes. When we use them and place them in our forms, we are already instantiating them to objects. Properties are data that describes an object like names, addresses, and ID numbers to people. Methods are functions or procedures that an object can do like eating, sleeping, and running to people. While events are triggers to either manipulate properties or call methods like I'm hungry so I will eat or it's bedtime so I will sleep. We are familiar with the properties window which usually can be found on the lower right of Visual Studio. We can see here the properties of an object. And when we click the lighting button, we will be able to see the object's events. Another way to see both events and properties and even the methods is through the use of the IntelliSense when we type the name of the object and press dot. We can see events like dispose, properties with the wrench tool, and even methods like focus. Remember that when we use methods such as focus or to string, we end it with a pair of parentheses. Before we start with our activity, one last term that we need to introduce is the constructor. It's a special method in a class that is run when an instance of the class, an object, is created. For activity number 12, we will create an ASP.NET website and place it in CASP activity 12. Then we will create an ASP.NET web form named student form that contains two labels and a button. Then we will create a class named student class with two public properties, both of string data type named name and course, and a constructor with two arguments name and course. Then we will create a click event for the button to instantiate student class and display the arguments in the labels. Let's create our website, file new website. We'll put it in activity 12. And we'll create a a new web form and we'll call it student form. Let's go to the design view. Let's add table, maybe three rows, four columns. Put your name under it is course. And then we need a label and another label and a button below it. We'll change it to student class. Okay. Next, we'll create a student class. To do that, right-click Activity 12, Add, and select Class. We'll name it Student Class. And notice that as we click OK, you will receive a message like, it's suggesting that you have to place it in App Code folder. Just simply say yes because the app code folder is one of the special folders in ASP.NET and this folder holds code files. Notice that our class name is an extension name of CS and it's inside app code folder. In the main window, we can see our class construct, the class declaration, and inside it is a special method that has a name similar to our class. This is called the constructor. Now let's declare our two properties, which are both public and both are string. The first one is name and the other one is course. Now we will create in our constructor two arguments, both of type string. Actually, they will be referring to the values of our properties name and course. The other is C. So inside the constructor, we'll simply assign the values that we got from N and C to name and course. 
Okay, so we're done with our class. We were able to declare two properties and a constructor with two arguments. This time, let's go back to our form and create an event for our button. So we will instantiate our class. We will make an object for our class. To do that, we have to call our class. They are student class. We have to create the name of the object, like button1, button2, for the button class. And then, new. And then again, the name of the class. Now remember that in our constructor, we have to uh, enter two arguments. So let's say, Abdulillah for the name of the student, and another one, CS for computer science. Semicolon. Now we have an object called S that has two arguments, Abdulillah and CS. So this time, uh, this Abdulillah and CS have been have been transferred or assigned also to our uh, name and course properties. So it's as easy as saying that if you want to put these two values in our labels, then we'll simply equalize it and use S, then press dot. Now you can see our properties course and name. Right. They are now properties of this class S, an instance of the student class. And the same thing with label 2. That text will assign here the course property of our object S. Now, that's it, class. So if we run it to our browser and we click the button, there you can see that the name has become Abdulillah and the course is CS. As a continuation for our activity, we will revise the student form by adding two more labels and another button. Then we will create a second class, student class 2, with two, this time, private properties, a same name, string name, and course. Then we will create a click event for the button to instantiate student class 2 and assign values to the properties and display them in the labels. Let's create our second class by right-clicking the app code folder, add, and then add new item. Make sure you select class and the name is student class 2. So what's the difference between this class and the previous class? In the previous class, both properties were declared public. public sorry. Here, both of them will be declared as private. Now, what does that mean? It means that here, when we instantiate this class and we press the dot after the name of the object, we will not see this name and course unlike in the previous class. The second difference is that we're not going to use a constructor in this activity. Instead, to manipulate the values of these properties, we're going to use uh, this something called property accessors. So this property accessors will allow us to get the value and to set the value for our properties. Now, one rule is that the property accessor must start with a capital letter. So that's good because we can simply uh, change the first letters uppercase to uppercase the property uh, so that that will already stand as our accessor. So what do you do with this accessor? There are There is a shortcut for this one, the automatic property accessor, but we will start first with the long method. To show you what's the real relevance of this get and set parts. In the get part, you are simply going to return the value. So it's like retrieving uh, the value from our property. While the set part is simply assigning the value to our property. Now that's the same thing for our course. So we'll simply capitalize a C and forget we will uh, return the value of the course and for set we will assign the value for the course. Okay so now let's go back to our student form and add two more labels one 
and two label three and label four and a button which we are going to change to student class two okay that's the text property only okay, double click now we'll try to manipulate our data but before that we have to instantiate our class so we're talking about student class two let's have the name s also it's equal to new student class 2. Okay, there. No arguments. We did not set any argument for the constructor. In fact, we did not do anything with the constructor. So how are we going to uh, change the properties values? Now, if I press that, you don't see anymore the properties. Instead, what we are looking at are the property accessors, name and course. Okay, let's start with name and we will assign the value amid. So there are two parts, right? A set and get. Right now, because we are assigning a value to our property accessor, we are using the set part. So the same thing for the course. It's equal to, let's say, is. Now, if we will put them in our labels, label three dot text for the name, and we use again this methods as that name or I mean property accessories. So this time we are trying to retrieve, retrieve the value from the name property accessor. So this time we are using the get part. The same thing is what we will do with label for that text is equal to as that course. Okay, so if we run this now, or we look at this now in our browser, and we click student class there, we came Ahmed and IS, it's still the same for student class. I told you a while ago that there is a shortcut for this. If you're not going to do any other codes besides getting and setting, meaning retrieving data and assigning values to the properties, then you can simply put semicolon after the get and also semicolon after the set semicolon after the get and semicolon after the set and you go back to your form and try to look at the output in the browser it produced the same one well, congratulations. We just finished discussing classes and objects in ASP.NET. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Mas salama.